finally, finally starting to feel like spring. And so we've been able to get in the boathouse and do a little bit more because things can start to dry. It's still a little too cold for epoxy to cure, but we could put the final oil coat on the keel timber here and have it actually dry and cure properly. So this winter when we flattened the top, we just got some cheap paint to put on it and the paint ended up freezing more than it ended up drying and it cracked and it blistered. So we just scraped all that off, started from scratch and put on some Danish teak sealer. And so far it's looking really, really good. So the next step is we got to get this puppy rolled over and final thickness it. And then we can do the final cut to width and start working on the ballast keel. This winter seemed particularly difficult in terms of boat work. With the drastic changes in weather, we got really cold temps, which affected certain work in terms of painting and epoxy. Now the weather is finally starting to look up, but what we learned is that in regards to boat building, it is slow and takes patience. Even in terms of working on simple pieces of the boat, just the sheer size of some of them required time and planning even just to consider starting to work on them. In the case such as ours, where we do not have access to heavy equipment, simple machines and leverage are your friend. We took advantage of one of those simple machines, a large lever, in order to flip the keel timber for us to get ready to get it to its final thickness. <laughs> not a small piece of wood. Recently we brought the keel timber down to its final thickness and we had a couple little challenges doing that. Uh, when we did the initial flattening, we set up the rails just perfectly straight and flat and thickness the top of it. And then we painted it, but it was too cold to paint and that was something we didn't really think too much about. And the paint ended up kind of freezing and I don't think it sealed very well. And our keel timber actually ended up warping itself up a little bit as that top side dried and shrank. So when we went to flip the keel timber and set up the rails, we couldn't set up the rails just off that same level like we did before because the keel timber had a little bit of a bow to it. And getting the keel timber to the proper thickness was more important than getting that out that flatness removed or that bow removed. So what we ended up doing is I had Alex come and help me and we taped two of the squares together so our keel timber is 10 inches thick. And we basically did that and then we just taped the little square to the big square. What we ended up doing was putting this against the face of the keel timber and then we could slide it down and we knew exactly where the rails needed to be. So we used this to set up the rails parallel to the jointed face of the keel timber. And that way we've got a beam that is the same thickness from one end to the other, but right now it has just a little bit of a bow to it, which will be easy enough to take out once we get a final cut and to shape and we start to mate it to the lead keel. We can put the timber down, we can put the lead keel on it, we can put bottle jacks on either end, jack that like literally it's just a quarter of an inch out of the entire length of the timber. Um, you can jack that quarter of an inch out of it, put everything in place, and we should be able to keep it there. Um, once we flip out all the assembly upright and we have the ballast keel attached and the dead wood attached, if there's still that quarter inch that we're off, same deal, we can put the jacks underneath either end and just shimmy it out. Um, and then by the time all the framing's done, that should be fine. And honestly, a quarter of an inch over a 20 something foot keel timber is really not all that much to be terribly concerned about anyways. So we set the rails up with our jig and worked the router back and forth until the keel was at its final thickness. The other little snafu we had with bringing the keel timber down to final thickness was we were going along with the router all nice and comfy like and the router bit just dropped a little bit here. I don't really know why, I don't really know 
what caused it, if the adjustment shifted, if the bit shifted in the collet. Uh, I was going along, the router bit caught a little bit, which it had done before, and I think that jolt from it catching was enough to either suck the bit down a little bit or mess with the adjustment. And I made two passes before I realized that that router bit had dropped about an eighth of an inch. So that way we have this little groove. Um, it'll land on top of the ballast keel, so it's not really that big of a deal. We're just going to, at this point, forget that it's there. We'll paint everything over it, and by the time we put a couple layers of paint, this divot will be even shallower than it is now. And we'll fill it in with the, uh, the bedding compound when we made it to the lead keel, and it shouldn't really create any issues for us. Uh, but it is a little bit of a bummer to <laughs> mess up in the, in the timber like that. But not much we're going to do about it, and we're certainly not going to jettison the giant keel timber for that one little hiccup. With the keel timber down to its final thickness, the bottom face is soaked in copper naphthenate. Copper naphthenate is used in wood preservation to protect against fungal rot, decay, termites, and wood boring critters. So this protects the timber from anything trying to get in from the water. Something else I found out during my research is that in addition to a broad efficiency against fungus and insects, copper naphthenate has a low mammalian toxicity and therefore has taken the place of some more toxic chemicals in certain applications. With copper naphthenate on the keel timber and temps relatively low, there wasn't much more we could tackle that afternoon. However, we did have some scrap metal that had accumulated, including a bunch of old copper pipe donated by my friend Dan, and an aluminum mast from the boat we decommissioned last year. So that seemed like a good opportunity to use the truck we had just bought off of Tom. All right, and a ride in this new truck. New we truck, just, yeah. <laughs> wow, the new old truck. <laughs> so ride in our new truck. Um, we're gonna go cash in some scrap metal. We uh, painted the copper naphthenate on the keel timber right now and we're just waiting for it to dry. So this was a good thing for us to occupy our time with. There's always some sort of adventure to be had, even locally. Going into cash in metal to recycle at the scrap yard is definitely a cultural experience. It's also interesting to consider environmental stewardship when recycling metal and seeing a site like this, especially after the comments we got for our contained keel pour. So this is why we went and took the time to cash in the copper and that aluminum from the sailboat we scrapped. So uh, yeah, 300 and something bucks. That doesn't hurt, so we'll put that to use, which is great. Uh, now we can go back and hopefully the naphthenate will be dry, we can give it a coat of paint and get stuff packed up and ready to go down to Rhode Island tomorrow. Fun fun. We're using the best day of this year for boat building to come down here for the Jamestown Distributors tent sale. We figured we'd bring a little piece of the boat and try to get some work done. So I'm working on uh, using the plane to take off all the glue and flatten and joint one side of this stem assembly so that when the time comes, we can flip it over and run it through the thickness planer. Because this was really one of the only pieces of the boat we could bring here to work because the lead keel and the keel timber are just way too huge. Um, so yeah, trying to be as productive as we can. <laughs> it was a great day hanging out with great people, talking about our project, and we even got to chat with Lou Sazidi from Tips from a Shipwright. <laughs> so you're gonna help them out, Lou? No, they don't need any help. We know the winter has been frustratingly slow. Nobody feels that more than we do. Uh, and we haven't been able to get nearly as much done as we would have hoped. And one thing, uh, to know is that the videos are about two weeks behind real time. It just takes a while to film, to edit it, to get that all put together. So two weeks ago when this footage was shot, it was cold and it was snowing. And in the last week or so, spring has sprung and a lot of stuff has gone down here in the boatyard. So although this video is not the most titillating, not the most exciting, it's gonna be the last one for a while. Um, now it is go time. We can proceed unhindered all summer 
And in the last week, we've probably done more than we did all winter, discounting, pouring the ballast keel. So we got these two beautiful locust logs from Cape Cod. We got the hookup from Earthworm Landscaping. Uh, and they're sourcing locusts out on the Cape for us. We just need to go pick it up. So we're going to go get a couple more loads of that. We had a visitor from Colorado come, and we got a bunch of work done in the boathouse. So let's go check that out and give you a little teaser of what's to come. So one great thing that happened in the last week is our newfound friend Simon loaned us his beam saw, which you can imagine made cutting the keel timber a much easier process. So thank you, Simon. And we also had a guy come in from Colorado, uh, his name Ryan, and he gave us a hand for a whole week. And during that time, we ran the bow and the stern timbers through the thickness planer and got those ready. Um, so we can check those out. They're right here. Here's one of the pieces of the bow assembly that we worked on. This is the stem knee. So with Ryan's help, Ryan, Alex, and I ran the three pieces of the stem and the main stern timber through the thickness planer and got them down to six inches, which is where they're supposed to be. The rest of the timbers, we put them right back in the garage so that they're out of the sun because we're not going to need them for a little while. Um, but we brought out the bow timber just to, you know, show that we did it. And then over here, we've got some work on the two keels. So we got the starboard side of the keel timber here, all flat and smooth, it's down to its final shape. And once this last coat of Danish teak oil dries, we can roll it over and remove the last strip on the other side. It's already been cut with the beam saw. We set up another lead containment area and used this new Fest tool vac we got that is rated for lead dust and went and finished smoothing off the top of the ballast keel. And we put some uh, total boat, total fare, fairing compound on there. And that'll fill out the last little bits of divots. So tomorrow I can come in and give this a final sand and it can start getting painted. I can roll the keel timber here and we can pop off the other side. And in very short order, we'll be able to put these puppies together and mate them for life, which will be super exciting. So as you can see, it is hot in here. It is bright in here. Spring has sprung and we are on a roll. We just haven't quite got there in the videos. So stay tuned, the next one's gonna be exciting and from then on, it's just gonna get crazier. By the end of the summer, we're gonna have something that looks like a boat and that is gonna be amazing. We've been waiting a long time for that. So thanks for bearing with us this winter and uh, get buckled up for an awesome summer. We're psyched.